Okie dokie. Um, this is homework paper one, and this is for the higher tier, and these are the solutions. Um, it's the one that is March 2008 on the front. Okay, so straight away, let's get on with question seven. Uh, question one, sorry. Um, 487 divided by 23, what is the remainder? Straightforward first question, plug that into maybe a, a bus shelter method. The remainder is four for this one. Uh, question two. The highest common factor of 16 and 36 is 4. 4 is the largest number that can go into both of these. Okay, 8 goes into 16, uh, but it does not go into 36. So 4 is the one we're after. It isn't any of these other larger numbers because common factors are numbers that go into numbers. Okay, uh, moving on. Question 3. The diagram shows a rectangular floor. The length of the floor is 3 metres. The width of the floor is 2 metres. Jane is going to cover the floor with tiles. Each tile is a square of side 50 centimetres. Jane wants to cover the floor completely. How many tiles does she need? The answer to this is 24. And just to kind of see where, we're, where we've got that from is that the area is 200 uh, centimetres by 300 centimetres, which is 60,000 centimetres squared. Each tile covers uh, 2,500 uh, centimetres squared. We can do a quick division and cancelling down here. Uh, such that we're left with 60,000 uh, divided by 2,500 or 600 divided by 25. And simplifying that and dividing that, we can get 24. Obviously, you could do that through uh, a bus shelter uh, and arrive at the answer as well. There's another way you could approach this as well. Knowing that each of the squares is 50 centimeters, we know that there's going to be four of them on this side length and that there's going to be six of them on that side of the length. So effectively, it just turns it into a four times six uh, calculation, also arriving at 24. Okay, uh, last one on this page, uh, question four. Simplify 3a plus 4c, take away a uh, minus 5c. Very, fairly simple one, this one. We've got our 3a, take away our a, so it's gonna definitely be something with a 2a in it, ruling out that one. And that one. So now it's out of three, and we've got four c minus five c, uh, which is going to be negative one c or negative c. So the one we're looking at for here would be this one, two uh, a minus c. Okay. Next question. Uh, question five. Factorize y squared plus four y. So we're looking for the highest common factor here for both of these terms. And that, in this instance, is y. So we're looking to extract y uh, from both terms. Um, the correct answer for this one would be b. And we could confirm that by just multiplying them back together. y times y is y squared. And y times 4 is going to be 4y. Number 6, bearings. The bearing of q from p, so make sure we get that the right way around, of q from p, so we're starting at p, is 120. What is the bearing of P from Q? So effectively, that means we're starting at Q. Bearings, three basic rules, always clockwise. Always three digits. And always start from north. Those are the basic rules. So we're looking at whatever's going to make make this up. So effectively, if you can draw a little line continuing down there, you can have 180, oh, sorry, 120 plus 180. So we're looking for 300 in total. A common mistake there is the 240. A lot of people just add or take that off 360 to get the 240. So just be careful with that one. Uh, Peter cycles two, 20 miles in two and a half hours. What is his average speed in miles per hour? There's a couple of ways you can go about this. You can do, I mean, first things first, you might want to write down your little speed, distance, time triangle there. That might help you out. And we can fill in our information there. Average speed is going to be our unknown. Our distance is the 20 divided by two and a half. Um, with this being a non-calculated question, you could set this up as a, effectively as a ratio table. 
and it could be effectively something like speed distance time like this um distance and time is 20 and two and a half which if we double both of those things will be 40 divided by five and now we're left with uh whole numbers um we can therefore see that we've got 40 divided by five which is then going to be eight miles per hour because don't forget the 20 miles in two and a half hours is the same as going 40 miles in five hours if the if the speed is constant we're, we're assuming the speed is constant um, that is implied by asking for average speed. So 40 divided by 5 is 8. Uh, okay, uh, number 8, question 8. Here are the first five terms of, a, of an arithmetic sequence, meaning that the difference each time is constant. Going up in threes each time. Fairly easy to see. Increase in three. What is the expression in terms of three or in terms of n for the nth term rule? It's going to have a three n in it because the the three increase effectively is telling us that this is the three times table but adjusted. That's not got three n in it. Neither is that one. It's going to be one of b, d, and e. If I was to write the three times table underneath this, that would allow me to see what the adjustment is. So it's effectively the three times table but with one taken away each time. Therefore, our correct answer is going to be E, 3N minus 1. Question 9. Given that 37 times 234 is 8,658, what is the value of that? What we can see is that one number has got 10 times smaller and the other number has also got 10 times smaller, meaning our final answer is going to be 100 times smaller in total. So we're looking for something 100 times smaller than 8,658. The correct answer here is going to be moving two decimal places along 86.58. 10. Which of these coordinates, which are the coordinates of the midpoint of the line ST? Well, S is 2, 3. T is 7, 9. There are different ways you can present this. Sometimes a lot of people figure this out themselves. The midpoint is going to be halfway between both the x value separately and the y value. So halfway between 2 and 7. Add them up is 9. Divide by 2. It's going to be 4.5. 3 plus 9 is 12. Then divide by 2 is 6. So we're looking for 4.5 and 6. Again, that one is B. I, used to, I teach uh, one of my lower groups, a little way of reminding this, find halfway, you can do, add them up and divide by two. So if you want to find halfway between two numbers, obviously that works for coordinates as well, you add them up and divide by two. And that's a little way of remembering that. Question 11. What is the area of this triangle? Um, there's one red herring piece of information given here that we can ignore. We don't need um, the length of the hypotenuse. We only need, need the two shorter side lengths for calculating area and in this instance we're looking at 10 times 24 which would give us this rectangular area and then we're going to halve that for the triangle which is 120 meters squared question 12 what is 225 written as a product of its prime factors now i happen to know that 225 is the same as 15 squared which is therefore going to be 3 times 5 squared or 3 squared, 5 squared, which is the same. And we recently covered that in some of our recap at the start of the year. Um, so if we have a look here. <laughs> that would be this one. I actually couldn't, I, for a moment there, I couldn't spot it. Um, this would obviously be the answer in index form. But we're looking for 3 squared and 5 squared. Question 13. Which of, the, which of these is the best estimate for the value of 410 times 6.9 divided by 0 0.23? I, I think we're looking at something like 400 times 7 over 
I guess this is over 0 0.2. Um, so we've got 28, 2800. And we're going to make this be five times bigger. Because this is fairly close to 0 0.2. When you're dividing by 0 0.2, which is 20%, that's the same as dividing by a fifth, which is the same as multiplying by five. Short cut for multiplying by five, multiply by 10, and then halve it. So that gives us 28,000 and then halve it. That's going to give us 14,000. Uh, X plus two multiplied by X minus four. X squared. If we're looking for something we're going to X squared in, if we've got X squared, we're then looking for minus four X. Then we're looking for plus 2x, and then we're looking for negative 8. This part will tidy up to minus 2x, and then we're looking for negative 8. So that would be e. Look it up. Next one, 15. Factorize um, x squared minus x minus 6. So what we're looking here, uh, the little clues here, is we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to make six and also that are one apart from each other because we've just got a one x there um so it can't be the one and the six here because the one and the six are not one apart it can't be the one and the five so we're going to rule that one out as well immediately now because this is a negative negative six we also know it's not going to be negative times a negative it's going to basically rule this out through a bit of basic reasoning to either C or D. The reason why it is D is because this is a negative X, negative X here, and therefore we're going to want the negative value is going to be larger. So we've got negative three, but only a positive two. So here we would have negative three X, and there we'd have positive two X, and that's why the answer is is D. Question 16. A machine tool is made from two parts. One part has a length of one and three quarter inches. The other part has a length of two and two thirds inches. What is the total length in inches of the machine tool? So this is adding fractions. Um, a couple of ways you can go about approaching it. I normally teach adding up the full units part first, and then we're just going to add together The fraction part separately some some teachers will 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 teach this by changing it to uh, improper fractions and then adding up and then converting it um there's different ways of doing it this is how i would do it so you're going to have we're going to make this be 12s so this is going to be 9 twelfths plus 8 twelfths which is 17 twelfths altogether which is one and five twelfths. So we're going to have that one and five twelfths added to this. So we're going to have four and five twelfths, which is B. Okay, next, 17. The lowest common multiple, the LCM of 30 and 48. We're looking for a number that is going to be in the 30 and the 48 times table. Um, probably the best way to do this and confirm this, I know that the answer is 240. I know. I just know that. I know that 30 is going to this eight times. I know that 48 is going to this five times. Um, but if I didn't know that, one way of doing this would be finding the product of the prime factors for both. So I'm going to take a moment and do that. Five, six, two, three, eight, six, two, four. Two, three, two, two. So over here, sorry, excuse me. Let's move that up a bit on that. So I've got two squared, sorry, not two squared, uh, two times three times five for 30. And for 48, I have got one, two, three, four, two to the power of four times by three, effectively 16 times three. And when I'm looking for the lowest common multiple, I can draw a Venn diagram and any of my common factors I put in the shared space um, it, within the Venn diagram. So um, for the 30, five would go on that side. Three would go in there because three appears in both of them. There's a two that appears in both of them. 
one of them, and there's three other twos that appear here. And what we've done is we've basically, we can basically multiply all this together. Um, we're not then counting each of these two in the middle twice. So we've got eight times six, which is 48, times by the five, which is 240. So you end up multiplying all these, or everything that you can see together in a Venn diagram um, to find the lowest common multiple. Certainly useful for maybe trickier ones. Question 18, the length of a piece of wood is 123 millimeters, correct to the nearest millimeter. What is the greatest length that the piece of wood could be? From our values here. Okay. It's going to, if we ask the greatest, so we're going to rule out B because that's less than that. Um, because we are to the nearest millimeter, it's not going to be to like the nearest even number or anything like that. So it rules out 124. And if it was to the nearest tenth of a millimeter, we'd be thinking about two decimal places, but we're not, so we're not including C. So it now comes down to A and E. Some basic rounding here. If we had this number here, if that was a number, that would round up to 124. So it's not going to be that one. Process of elimination, if we didn't know it instantly, is 123.4 for these of these values. Uh, 19. Factorize completely 6x squared minus 9xy. I can see that a 3 and, a, and an x are in both terms. 3x on the outside, leaving a 2x minus 3y inside. I'll just double check that in my head. 3x times 2x is 6x squared. 3x times um, negative 3y will be 9xy. Is one of these a present answer here? Yeah, there it is. That one there. Okay, question 20. What is the number 23,500 in standard form? Uh, the correct answer for this one would be C. It's 2.35, and then after the first significant figure, we have four places. 21. F and G are two points on a 3D coordinate grid. Point F is 2, 3, 3. Point G is 6, negative 1, negative 4. What are the coordinates of the midpoint of the line segment FG? Now, just because this is 3D, it doesn't need to confuse us. Here's F, here's G. Got my midpoint in the middle here somewhere. I've got X, Y, and the Z ordinates. There's my F. Halfway between 2 and 6 is 4. Halfway between 3 and negative 1. As I said, find halfway. You can do add them up and divide by 2. Add them up, I get 2. Divide by two, I get one. Okay, I've got three and four here. Add them up, seven. Divide by two, three and a half. Hopefully, there should be an answer that fits that description. Mm -hmm. uh, but four, uh, have I made a mistake? on, let me just quickly check and make a mistake. Ah, my mistake, I just forgot the negative four there. So that would be three, take away, uh, take away four, uh, one, uh, or negative one, sorry, and therefore we're going to halve that, and that's going to be negative a half in that one there. So apologies, negative half. So we're looking for four, one, negative half. So we see. Apologies on the mistake there. I forgot a negative symbol and made a silly mistake. Don't make my mistake. Expand and simplify this. That's fairly easy. We'll write that out. 3x minus 2y. 3x minus 2y. So we're looking for 9x squared. An answer with 9x squared in it. Doesn't they all have? Okay. Then we are looking for something with plus 4y squared. So it can't be that one because that's not plus 4y squared. Or that one. Okay. Then we're looking for one that's going to have that's the negative 3x. That's that little portion there is going to be negative 6xy. Um, we've already done that one, so, and then we've got another negative 6xy there. So what was going on here is we're going to have minus 12xy from one of the ones we've got, and it's going to be a plus. So that is C there. 
No, it is not, is it? It is not because we've got the y squared. It is indeed e. Okay, 23. Another multiplying out of brackets. 2x squared. The first part, first term. I have then got negative 3 times 2x, so negative 6. I then have an x. And then I have negative 3. So I am looking for something that ends in a negative 3. Can't be that one. And then I'm looking something that is going to be negative 5x. That's that one. It's got negative 3 at the end. It's 2x squared there. Okay, factorize 6x squared plus x minus 12. So what we're looking here is two numbers that are effectively uh, one apart, or we could act, it's not going to be as simple this time, apologies, it's going to have like maybe a 2x in it. So we're going to need to check this one carefully. Um, possibly the simplest thing to do here would be taking out, bear with me one moment. Okay, um, so we carry on with this one. And what we've got here, this quadratic is a little bit harder, this one, because we've got the, the six as our a value, um, if we have it, if we were to write it in the format of ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, so this time we need to be looking at our a and c values here. And there's a, a little process here that, well, I think will work for you. And if we take our a and c values, and multiply them together, the 6 and the 12, uh, we have 72. And we'll remember that's a negative for, for the time being. And what we're going to do is we're just going to list all our factor pairs of 72. 1 and 72, uh, 2 and 36, 3 and 24, 4 and 18, uh, 6 and 12, 8 and 9. What we're looking for is a pair of numbers here that are basically going to be one different from each other, so we can unadd this middle term here. And what we can notice here is that we have an 8 and a 9. So we can represent this quadratic as 6x squared plus 9x, we'll take that 9 from there, minus 8x. And why, why plus 9, why minus 8? Because I know that that 8 there Sorry, that x there is a plus, and I need two numbers that are like one away from each other, but are going to leave it as a plus. So we're going to have a positive 9 and a negative 8. And then we've just got to take away 12 at the end. Now, what we need to do here is we're going to kind of separate these in two separate parts and just do a little bit of factorizing on both sides. So on this side, factorizing this portion here, We've got 6x squared plus 9x. The largest thing that goes into both is 3x. And you've got 2x squared plus 3. And on this side, the largest thing that will go into both is a 4. If we're just kind of looking at this part here. So it's negative 4 extracted from outside there. So we have 2x plus 3. Remember that's a plus 3 there uh, because it's negative times a positive so that would leave it, that would have created a negative. So this is kind of working backwards. Now what we can see here is that we've got 2x plus 3 inside of brackets and also a 2x plus 3 inside of brackets there. So one of our bracketed portions is going to be 2x plus 3 and the other portion is going to be the 3x minus the 4. So effectively, we're saying we've got 3x lots of this, and we've got negative 4 lots of this. And that then leaves us with, which one is it? 3x minus 4d, part d there. So this little process um, it takes a bit of a while. But once you get in the hang of it, um, you can start to do it in your head. Once you see the a value and the c value, multiply them together and find factor pairs that suit the condition of creating the middle term, the, the B value. You then have to effectively unadd 
uh, two terms, like we've done there, as if you the opposite as of if you're tidying it up. Okay, question 25, the last one on this section. A tank contains 40,000 centimeters cubed of salt. The salt was removed from the tank at a constant rate. It took two hours and 40 minutes to empty the tank completely. At what rate in centimeters cubed per second was the salt removed from the tank? Okay, so we've got 40,000 centimeters cubed. The salt was removed from the tank at a constant rate. So it's, it's not changing, it's the same amount coming out constantly. It took two hours and 40 minutes to empty the tank completely. What rate in centimeters cubed per second was the salt removed from the tank? So if we're talking about centimeters cubed uh, per second, we are probably going to need to take our hours and minutes and just write that um, and convert that to seconds. So two hours, 40 minutes is a hundred and 60 minutes. Uh, times by 60. Um, it, six lots of 16. Uh, three lots of 16 is 48. Six lots of 16 is 96. So it's going to be 9, 6 with two zeros glued on. So that's how many seconds it's taken. And it was 48,000. Now that happens to work nicely with this number because 48, 48 is half of 96 in terms of your significant figures. Um, so in that instance there, we are going to be saying 48,000 litres and it is taken that amount of time. So what's the rate? It's going to be effectively Five. I know that that goes into that five times. It's going to be five centimeters cubed per second. So that concludes the answers for the first part. I'll do the answers to the second part in a second video for the calculator part.